This conference will now be recorded. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, this is Vidya Sagar. I'm coming with uh, 17 years of experience in the film industry. Out of that seven years, into uh, 10 minutes in the corner in the technical skills. So, being a technical specialist in this industry, uh, I will be take care of entry and implementation uh, in order to you know, uh, implement it. Uh, leading the VPN tools uh, such as Appen and its Grafana uh, Dynatrix. Uh, so, coming to uh, Grafana and responsible to set up you know, the internet implementation in terms of the observability platform uh, where I will be. Here you are. Like, uh, hey, this show. Uh, am I audible? A little bit. It's kind of faint. Hello. Am I audible? Kind of better. Not clearly. Uh, how about now? Uh, it is still low. The voice is not clear. That uh, means not able to hear you properly. Hello, how about now? Uh, it is same. This conference will now be recorded. I'll quickly share my screen. So here I've, uh, I'll just take a few minutes uh, you know, to walk you through uh, so what exactly the full stack observability and how, why we need this full stack observability and what it makes to, you know, <clears throat> uh, go forward with observability and now it is being implemented with uh, Grafana. Uh, as we know, like uh, currently, the, the everything is like in the digital world. Okay, so when I say digital world, we are seeing like, you know, the different types of applications. Uh, some of them are the Kubernetes based. There are like you can see the applications are developed, uh, you know, the Swift based. And there are some applications landscape which are coming with, you know, hybrid model. Uh, there may be like, uh, you know, the front end applications are hosted on the Kubernetes. And whereas there are some applications which are still, you know, uh, working, uh, working from the on-premise where there may be some legacy stack which are like kind of uh, not able to onboard to the cloud and if you can take there are some other uh, you know the technology stack uh, where uh, the private applications which are hosted on the private cloud uh, where it cannot be like it's exposed to the public cloud and also there uh, you can see uh, the different applications uh, coming from the aws microsoft azure ibm cloud uh, and also there are the various uh, applications uh, which have been in onboarding. So in order to uh, measure, you know, the overall performance in terms of the different domains, like uh, the, from the business perspective, from the infrastructure, from the application perspective, from the synthetic uh, synthetic perspective, and also from from the networking perspective. Uh, you have to you have to have like uh, you know the different uh, the monitoring tools are to be worked in siloed. So that's where uh, what happens is like if you have the tools in siloed, uh, where uh, it is very uh, you know the challenging uh, in order to measure the end-to-end -end performance uh, having a different tools uh, you know in the market. So having said that, uh, here is like uh, we are having a you know the uh, the observability tools uh, which are called uh, the Grafana New Relic. So what they do exactly like once you have the, the agent is running uh, on the uh, different digital world. Uh, so where you, you can plot uh, you know the dots of right from the business you know the till to the end user performance. And also you can easily measure from the IoT, the data center uh, metrics you can easily pull and the branch level metrics you can easily, you know, the correlate and, uh, uh, you know, the put it uh, on the uh, dashboards. So this is about uh, like how the, uh, the digital world would be there. 
and why we need the full stack observability. So as we said, like uh, the observability. So when we talk in observability, it is something kind of like a practice or a method or an approach through which you are going to observe the application. Okay, using uh, the metrics, uh, the events, the logs, the uh, traces. Uh, so you you may you may ask like so what is the difference uh, between the monitoring and, and observability? Uh, so basically, like the monitoring is nothing but it just say like what's going on there. But whereas the observability, it will say like why it is happened, why the failure it is happened. So that's where like this uh, approach, this method will come where you can instrument the application. Uh, <clears throat> from end to end covering up of all these four metrics, all these four pillars, which are called metrics, events, logs, and traces. So that's where this uh, full stack observability comes into the picture, so which will enable the customers from the monitoring to the full stack observability. If the customers is like having a complex environment with uh, a traditional IT environments uh, where uh, you know, the measuring the application performance is like a kind of uh, quite challenging. So that's where this will come up. And their customers are struggling with, uh, you know, the applications, uh, the visibility, uh, getting insights uh, on the particular stacks uh, from maybe managed and unmanaged. So that's where you can, you know, the bring in the full stack observability, so which you can get in visibility across all the domains which I talk about the business, application, infrastructure, end user, uh, uh, security, and the networking. So all these six domains, you can get like, you know, end-to-end -end visibility and you can just correlate uh, with, to get insights uh, from all the corners and then you can take an appropriate action. Uh, either, uh, you know, you can, you can like integrate, uh, integrate with the third party systems to, to perform some operations so that in order to bring your application back to the normal. So all these, you know, things can be uh, performed with a single, uh, single like observability tool, uh, which is like a Grafana, Datadog, uh, and there are like Neuralink. But the Grafana like, uh, Grafana like is kind of like useful, which is like an easy to implementation. And with help of the Prometheus, which is a backbone uh, to the Grafana, so which is kind of like goes with the time series database uh, measurement, so which will give you like a, you know, the detailed insights and the, a good uh, view of uh, your application uh, performance. And coming to... Uh, so what are the uh, what are the gaps like that have been uh, filled with this observability using Grafana? Okay, so for instance, uh, you uh, assume that there is an uh, there is no ability in order to get a complete uh, you know uh, the visibility of the uh, you know the single pane of view where you wanted to get uh, the complete uh, the insights and visibility on the full stack full stack across the various domains. As I said, right now, like there are six to seven domains and the different data types, okay? So that's where like, you know, we are bringing in Grafana uh, in order to get in view on that. And also there will be a kind of like challenges uh, where there are like certain cloud native microservices. Uh, suppose if you take like an AppDynamics and the Dynatrace, so there are like still coming up uh, uh, to get a visibility, but uh, you know, uh, there you need to, uh, kind of like uh, have some uh, lot of you know the custom instrumentation uh, in order to bring those metrics uh, the visibility onto the <clears throat> dashboard. So that's where like this uh, Grafana and the Neuralink uh, uh, will come into the picture to get uh, the insights. And also there is uh, there is a challenge around uh, you know the getting the insights and correlate across the multiple stacks around the different domains. So that's where uh, this. Uh, uh, Full stack observability with Grafana will help, and also uh, you have to have like a siloed monitoring in order to measure the performance of infrastructure, application, and networks. Uh, but once you have a Grafana in place, you will get like an end-to-end -end view across all the seven domains. 
and also like uh, uh, you uh, suppose if you take an app dynamics uh, or maybe dynatrace uh, to to get a uh, to get an dependency on a third party system because you have an e-commerce application uh, for example you have a, like a uh, e-commerce portal uh, so where it is uh, you know the making uh, making a call to the third party service to, during the checkout order where it is making an apple pay or where it is making a call to the after pay <clears throat> or or it is making a call uh, call to the google pay so at that time uh, uh, at that time like uh, you 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 have to have like uh, again you know uh, uh, write a custom extensions using an app dynamics dyna trace uh, to to connect uh, dot to, to the application dependency uh, but here uh, you know this uh, grafana uh, grafana like being a full stack observability too uh, you will get like end to end visibility uh, covering up a third party service with the dependency performance in terms of resource utilization and in terms of uh, like you know the response availability uh, the response time the throughput so all those like uh, metrics uh, which which are dependent can be like easily uh, shown uh, using a grafana and also the for the last but not the least uh, you can easily you know uh, get uh, extraction around the uh, the metrics, the logs, uh, and also like it can easily integrate with the third party system, as I said earlier, like as part of uh, actions, which is like a third pillar of observability. The first pillar will be uh, uh, the overall full stack observability. The first pillar would be the visibility where you'll get a, uh, you know, the view across all the six domains. And next, the uh, next thing is an insights, which you can easily correlate uh, the, the performance across all the all the six domains and the third pillar would be the actions uh, so this uh, will give you like uh, what you are going to do next once once you see any you know the performance uh, deviation or the service is like not performing well so that's where like this integration comes in you know in order to do for a ops uh, for automatic uh, you know uh, the root cause analysis or maybe like the self healing where uh, you have to have like uh, write a script uh, by you calling an ansible an ansible tool uh, so that it will just go and it will just perform some operation so that it will heal automatically so these these sort of like things uh, which can be uh, you know easily uh, easily resolvable uh, by having this uh, in place as part of this so this is like one of the key uh, pattern and whenever uh, we are monitoring uh, an application or any system from the observability standpoint. So what are the best practices so that need to be adopted uh, so in the beginning? Uh, so ensure like uh, uh, we are, uh, what are the microservices okay, so that are being like uh, uh, deployed on the individual cloud services in terms of like token management, telemetry, app management and API management where you'll have like uh, uh, the security, the certificates, uh, and all those details to be captured uh, properly. And also the messaging, so there will be some message brokers uh, which will be deployed you know, in order to, you know, the talk between the different systems, either like Apache Camel or IBM WebSphere or whatever the messages are there. And also like ensure like for each uh, the metrics at the container and the cluster level to be captured so that's where like you can easily troubleshoot the system and also you get a uh, the basic uh, you know the level of network monitoring what are the the requests going uh, what did the, the uh, data level how much it is traffic is going out in, in and what are the transactions which got impacted uh, due to the low traffic so those those details like which needs to be captured well uh, if not, like you have to do some customization to get this thing, and also uh, ensure like the core, uh, the, the core components of an applications are captured well, uh, in terms of like the JVM from the Java perspective and the CLR uh, from the .NET, and what are the uh, virtual machines or the physical servers hosted? So all those uh, uh, so all those components to be. Uh, like uh, monitored so to get a complete view. If there are any middleware components involved, like EJB, uh, uh, like EJB or Mule, uh, Mule, uh, where it will you know the convert 
uh, convert the messages from front end to the back end and if you are having any graphql uh, where uh, it will it will convert uh, the front end messages to the uh, to the readable format uh, you know to the downstream systems so this is the one and the databases whatever the databases are there uh, so those need to be monitored and another thing is then like the analytics uh, from if the business wanted to have like uh, the high level view if, suppose if i talk about the salesforce commerce cloud uh, let us say like what are the number of orders placed and number of payments and order to order to pay so there are like certain use cases where the customer wanted to see at the business kpis so ensure like these four best practices to be implemented from the grafana in order to you know the capture into it uh so this uh i'll just uh, take a pass uh, let me know if you have any questions okay uh so we are talking about uh, this grafana cloud uh, so right now we are seeing like this uh, grafana cloud is becoming kind of like an open source uh, platform uh, where it is kind of like a saas offer it is coming in uh, uh, two uh, two propositions uh, one is like um, uh, the grafana enterprise uh, where you need to like purchase uh, uh, for the for the application metrics in order to capture the application and all the different stacks and there will be a uh, there will be a trial version available which is called like uh, grafana cloud uh, so it doesn't have any uh, doesn't have any like uh, a, a couple of months version available so basically it comes with a trial version so where it is uses in order to uh, track everything like with the metrics events uh, logs and traces uh, so this this will give you about uh, this is the uh, url uh, where you go uh, like access uh, grafana cloud uh, and basically like the grafana cloud comes uh, with the stats uh, basically like the these uh, stacks are kind of like a storehouse we can call it as a warehouse uh, where this uh, keep uh, uh you know they keep database of metrics logs traces the dashboards and alerts uh, for each uh, team uh, suppose if you are having like uh, uh, six to seven departments in an organization like uh, development testing performance testing uh and the uat and the production so that's where like we'll be creating a different stacks uh, for each uh, Team, uh, so that they have their own uh, database of alerts, uh, logs, and everything. So which will be easy to that. And uh, uh, this this will help you know in order to uh, cater the multi multi tenancy requirements uh, for each product, so that they will have a dist uh, different stacks which can easily distinct that one. And the stack uh, URL is like the identified by using uh, you know the defined by using the stack name. Again, here it is a stack name is nothing but the different teams like dev team you are having. So it is isha dev team dot grafana dot net. Uh, and if it is a production, uh, so there will be kind of like a fo fo prod dot grafana dot net. So based on that, certain rules, uh, users, roles, and groups will be created. Uh, so where uh, uh, this will be uh, pertain to Butler team. Where they can go ahead and access to that, and you make uh, and where we can find those tags and URLs. Uh, so basically, like uh, this, uh, this will take you to the particular cloud. Uh, okay, so this is uh, this is about like uh, Grafana cloud stack. Uh, if you can look at because this is a trial version, so only one stack can be created so once you land on this page uh, so here you can see like these are uh, uh, different uh, uh, tenants here okay so i'm having this also in this one um, uh, you have like you can create uh, this uh, stack here uh, the moment you just create the stack you'll be getting uh, this six to seven components will be created which are the key uh, key ones to grafana so this is like grafana 
uh, where it will just go and launch the Grafana is kind of like a front end where uh, it gives insights and correlation of all the overall application. And Prometheus, this is a, this main the backend, uh, a backend one uh, to the Grafana. So where uh, it is like a, a metrics system which it will scrape the metrics from the different application components and which will send it to Grafana. And again, the Loki, uh, which is used for the log management, uh, where it uses the prompt tail as an agent, uh, where it will push uh, the logs to the Loki, so that again, this Loki will manage to show the, you know, the log events uh, to the Grafana. And this is Graphite is like another metrics, which is used to measure the metrics. Uh, and this is alerts. Uh, this is used in order to, you know, it uses alert manager as a backbone to set up an alerts uh, based on like monthly, weekly, or depending upon, you know, the different uh, criticality of the application based on the thresholds. And this tempo is another component uh, which is used to, you know, in order to, uh, you know, just, uh, build the uh, distributed uh, traces. Uh, which will help in order to easily pinpoint the issue and identify the root cause for a particular event. Uh, and here you can set up, uh, you know, the policies and all those details. And you can also set up like uh, uh, the uh, multi-factor authentication uh, using here like OAuth2, uh, where you need to pass uh, like API, uh, which will give this one. And if there is any issue occurs, uh, you know, you can just raise the tickets uh, with this one, get support. And you can set up like a monthly, a weekly, weekly CMS, I think uh, that is like the customer success meet, where this Grafana, uh, Grafana like uh, partner manager will join and they will try to, uh, you know, uh, coordinate with us in order to uh, work on these tickets and try to resolve the issues. And the, with this billing, so there will be like monthly, uh, billings will be generated so based on like uh, you know the metrics you have been like consumed because this is like um, uh, kind of uh, a trial version so you'll have you don't have anything but by default you'll be getting like one lakh fifty thousand uh, metrics for the trial version so once uh, those got expired uh, you know you can you can kind of uh, uh, go for upgrading or maybe you can go for to the enterprise enterprise uh, grafana uh, cloud uh, so that uh, you'll be having a monthly consumption of uh, the metrics so that's that's about uh, this one and uh, uh, so here it is talks about uh, the one which are like uh, grayed out in the blue so these are kind of uh, uh, the permissions uh, which we have to give at the developer level operator and the business level uh, and here uh, comes with uh, the different roles. Uh, basically, it comes with the three different roles, the viewer, editor, and an admin. So admin is having like uh, full length uh, permissions uh, where he can go and, uh, you know, uh, do uh, manage and optimize uh, the stacks, uh, which are uh, like found to be any uh, like duplicated. He will just go there and manage those them. And the editor, editor is uh, kind of, uh, uh, he is he's kind of like, uh, you know, go ahead and uh, delete, uh, play, uh, and add, uh, modify the dashboards, the dashboard panels. And if you wanted to add a new data sources, so those details, you kind of like add a new uh, panels and all those details can be done. Viewer is something like, uh, uh, this can be given for the developer. Uh, sometimes for the operators, you know, the who are sitting in the, in the level one and level two, in the level one. So those guys will be having a viewer role. Uh, suppose if there is an issue occurs, uh, so they just go in and uh, bring up those uh, dashboard on the screen and they will try to see like uh, this belongs to which application, uh, which, uh, uh, which uh, group, uh, so that they just uh, route that uh, ticket to that. Event. So these are like various uh, roles uh, which Grafana provides, you know, in order to optimize the permissions and the roles. Uh, as I said, uh, these are the different components which we just spoken earlier. So Grafana, uh, which is a front end, which shows uh, all the details. It comes with uh, different uh, plugins. Uh, so it has like uh, the plugins for the database, for the third party systems, uh, for, for 
put further to to establish like uh, event management system in order to integrate uh, with service now uh, uh, service now or pager duty or it can also integrate with the splunk itsi which is the splunk uh, intelligence and the prometheus which is a back uh, backbone system for uh, uh, scraping the metrics to grafana the loki as i said it is uh, uses this uh, prompt tail loki comes together to push the metrics alert and alert manager uh, so uh, this is about like kind of uh, you know the prometheus architecture uh which because the grafana is kind of kind of like you know just a web ui okay so it doesn't do it is just like a, a console front-end console it's a completely you know the depend depend on these uh, uh, prometheus loki tempos okay if these uh, components kind of like stop for sending the metrics so grafana kind of like you know that doesn't have any ability to shoot the metrics so having said that, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of like comes with the three different uh, different uh, uh, like uh, uh, parameters. So here, this is the targets. So based on like this is the main, uh, you know, the components uh, where uh, these things will be used in order to uh, like expose the metrics. OK, so these are like a web app will expose the metrics. Linux VM will expose the metrics from the resource level by using like an exporter uh, plugin available and API server, which is having like the client library. <coughs> uh, there are like <coughs> client libraries which will be <coughs> used by Prometheus uh, so that they will try to scape, scrape those metrics from the web and application level and expose uh, to Prometheus. So that's why they can be like presented to the Grafana. MySQL, MySQL D. <coughs> uh, this is like an exporter which is used in order to scrape the metrics at the database level. And also, once you have this uh, Prometheus, uh, which uses the time series database, it is nothing but a timestamp data. So where it is having like all the all the like the time to time uh, metrics uh, available in the different uh, in the different phenomena like uh, summary. Uh, you will have like. Uh, <coughs> Uh, buckets uh, and all those uh, different uh, para, different uh, uh, palettes you are having the database and coming to this is like the service discovery so once you have this Prometheus running as a operator on either any of the kubernetes uh, uh, so this what happens so it will just start uh, uh, once you expose this Prometheus metric to uh, Prometheus operator to uh, kubernetes uh, AWS Google Cloud, it will start like, uh, you know, the, uh, capturing the metrics and then send it to Grafana. Basically, it, it works on like, uh, you know, the uh, pull and push uh, mechanism so that it will pull the metrics uh, from the different uh, cloud service providers and it will send, uh, you know, the metrics to Grafana. So that's that's where like uh, they've just given this. You can, you can just, uh, you know, uh, use this to collect storage processing. And this Grafana is a web UI which uses uh, the dashboard metrics. Uh, so these are like some uh, glimpses of uh, 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 the Grafana. So how we have to use this. Okay, so this will give you, uh, this is like works on an ML based uh, where everything like you have to mention for the, for the Prometheus, from the Loki, for Tempo, uh, for Grafana. So for all these uh, agents, you have to use this uh, YAML file, uh, which will like use in order to uh, you know uh, go ahead and deploy agent on particular Ubuntu, the VN, or whatever the uh, Linux systems are there. Uh, and this is this is uh, the like the format uh, uh, where we have to use the indent indentation. Uh, this is the node exporter, which is used in order to expose the metrics at the node level. And you have to use uh, this Prometheus API. Uh, this will use in order to, you know, the pull the metrics uh, which is sitting on the particular application and expose it to that. And this is the Loki. You have to mention uh, what sort of, uh, you know, the logs you wanted to expose uh, events which will be displayed to the metric, displayed to the Grafana. And you have to, uh, you know, everything will be, you know, everything will be denoted in terms of the job names, uh, where uh, <clears throat> uh, you wanted to have like uh, different log files, 
you wanted to you know the uh, separate uh, uh, discriminate those different things where you can uh, mention by the job name which under the scrape configs uh, what are the targets and all those details will be given and this uh, this one will help you to show the prometheus uh, metrics uh, once once you just uh, uh, have this url up and running uh, then push the metrics it will just uh, come up here and these are uh, some glimpses of uh, grafana uh, dashboard so this will give you about the resource level and what are the errors at the application level those will be given here uh, and here uh, this uh, this one uses uh, the loki uh, in order to uh, scrape uh, the logs and show it on this uh, this is about uh, the application level metrics so how this uh, uh, application performance over a period of time uh, and if you look at look, look, uh, look at the lower left corner uh, this is about the prometheus so once you expose the prometheus uh, using an operator based model it will start like showing uh, you know the metrics for a resource level application and all those things uh, i'll just uh, i'll just take you uh, take you to this uh, demo here uh, Yeah, unfortunately, I'm having some challenges here, so I've just uh, uh, drafted that in the uh, document. So I'll just uh, run you through this one. Uh, so basically, I uh, have used uh, uh, to build a, a Hello World. Uh, I've taken an Hello World application. I just uh, uh, build the workloads on uh, Azure Kubernetes. So that's where you can see it, like. Uh, it is running on the two two parts about this uh, Kubernetes. Uh, <clears throat> and this is uh, once you log in, once you log into this, uh, you know, the cloud shell. So this is kind of series of, uh, you know, the commands uh, which you have to uh, run run it across uh, to just enable the enable the uh, Hello World application and at the same time. Uh, you know the grafana so i have created a couple of uh, uh, namespaces so differentiate the application and uh, uh, you know the grafana so then uh, this is the definition file uh, which i have used uh, to onboard the hello spring boot uh, where i have used the micrometer because the micrometer uh, is is playing a major role where you have to give this configuration under the palm.xml uh, so that this will just go there and it will you know start uh, uh, sitting on top of uh, the jvms uh, the microservices jvms and it will just uh, get those metrics at the application level in terms of uh, request count errors response response time 95th percentile of okay. so all those uh, metrics like from the application level uh, which can be easily you know the exposed and presented to the prometheus these are about like two uh, definitions file uh, which I've used uh, to expose uh, these. And uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, this is about the deployment file. Uh, so used to, to just get this and once you have to run some couple of commands to see like whether the all parts are running in on it. Uh, okay, so we have like uh, this deployment, uh, the parts. Uh, the services and the replica set so i've used these uh, two replica sets uh, so using this uh, external ip uh, in order to uh, get the application to be displayed on this so once once you have this uh, application up and running uh, just checking it like whether it is uh, the metrics endpoint is properly uh, working or not so that's that can be uh, you know uh, tested by uh, by just uh, using because this 8080 we are exposing this uh, uh, hello world application to be exposed uh, you know uh, 8080 uh, port number so once you have done then slash metrics so that you can see the metrics at the jbm level at uh, the request uh, the success you will get success fail you can see like here 200 and you can see here uh, 404 uh, how many requests have been done uh, then coming to uh, you can you can get like uh, uh, seconds how much time it has been taken in order to do so all whatever the uh, 
uh, metrics uh, like which uh, the leading uh, APM tools are being exposed, all those metrics kind of uh, you know can be uh, sh uh, seen uh, from uh, from Grafana. So once you have uh, like uh, the application is working fine, the metrics is exposing. So now it is a time to uh, you know uh, onboard uh, Prometheus locally. So here we are using there are multiple ways uh, to do that. Uh, here we are using the help repos, which is like a standard practice, uh, which is like a standard built-in template uh, where you are having all the details about the uh, role binding, cluster role, all those uh, 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 configurations will be available. So to do that one, uh, I have like kind of added this, uh, the Loki and another one is like the Prometheus. So they are available uh, from the uh, Loki. Uh, this one. Uh, so once you have that one, you need to run this uh, certain set of commands, which you can see it on this Vim repo add. Uh, so then you can need to update the repository. So once you have done that, you need to uh, you need to like there is another one uh, repo Prometheus. Uh, this is chart start uh, Prometheus start uh, So uh, added that thing to the monitoring so that it will just start. Uh, uh, uh start like uh, deploying this uh, operator and at the same time the node export uh, so which will uh you know uh, help in order to uh, get the metrics uh, that will be scrape and uh, you know the push to the grafana and this is an alert manager uh, which will help in order to uh, you know set up our alerts based on the conditions for the particular application and for the particular resource are uh, across the different domains uh, like the business application infrastructure security uh, network okay. so all those in order to set up the alert conditions so you have to have this alert manager which will help uh, then it will also like load up this uh, grafana which is a front end uh, console mm -hmm. uh, and it will it will help uh, you know the cube's cube state metrics uh, okay. uh, which will help in order to uh, get all the cube, uh, Kubernetes uh, the metrics to be exposed here. And once it is done, uh, so we are uh, we are using this uh, uh, SVC uh, service service monitor. Uh, basically, this will help in order to uh, you know uh, scrape its metrics uh, to the premises. Of course, there is a micrometer is there, but the micrometer kind of like it will just get uh, application metrics. And it will just uh, help to show them. Uh, so here we are using this uh, service monitor, uh, which will do like automatic discovery uh, of uh, the applications. Uh, then it will show the metrics uh, to the Prometheus, and it will send it to the Grafana. So here it is the definition uh, which we have used uh, uh, to just uh, the details. So once we have that, uh, we'll be running this uh, service uh, monitor. Uh, once you have this uh, Grafana Prometheus uh, parts are available, uh, you need to expose those uh, metrics so which I have used this exposed part uh, Prometheus operator under the port number 9090. And uh, this Grafana is by default available at the 3000. So here we have to have used this imperative commands uh, to just expose uh, the metrics. Uh, and I will be I will be checking it up like whether uh, this all this uh, uh, services are available to the external world or not, so that we can do it with kubectl uh, get all. So once you have that, so this is the first glimpse of uh, the Prometheus, uh, uh, where it will show about uh, the different uh, details. And this is the Grafana, uh, which is available under the 3000 uh, 3, uh, uh, port number, which is easily exposable. So once you have that, uh, you can see like as we have as we have used this uh, service monitor uh, in order to scrape all the application metrics, infrastructure metrics. So once you have that, you can see this. Uh, these are all whatever it is deciding on the particular Kubernetes. All these details will be available here. This Kubernetes control manager, cube state metrics, node exporter, Prometheus, hello world. So this is an hello world. Uh, which is uh, uh, the two microservices which is running on it. And once you just expand this, you can see that uh, what are the metrics uh, uh, 
uh, it is able to uh, get into this okay so it is giving the namespace details what job it is running on it and what is an end point if it explodes in the metrics uh, for each uh, for those uh, two parts uh, which we can see like and uh, how long it is been running and uh, to uh, and also like uh, there are some default you know the prometheus uh, 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 metrics uh, this uh, this is like uh, prometheus query language metrics which, which we can call it as formal uh, so uh, here it uses like uh, what is the cpu if you can see that like, these are the two uh, two nodes uh, which have tried to get uh, right now it is like kind of uh, uh, the five five and one you can see uh, these these are like about 10 28 uh, milliseconds uh, and suppose if you wanted to validate the cpu number of cpus it is available so that there are some default things which you can do that and what are the maximum response time uh, which again is these two parts uh, which you can just get into this and if you wanted to find out this uh, container container level of uh, metrics okay so yes you have to run this command uh, by giving a particular namespace so which it will uh, ready to scrape this one and these are uh, once uh, once everything is in place uh, once you have service monitor deployed and once you restart out the uh, grafana prometheus uh, so then after a minute or two it will just start uh, you know the getting the metrics at the cpu level for each uh, part which you can see it here uh, so this is the CPU and this is the memory and the core level, number of cores and all those details. And this is like the resident uh, memory, uh, which will be which will give you like uh, uh, how much uh, uh, how much memory it has been used. Uh, all those details will be getting into it. And this is about the 404 error dashboard. And this gets the insights, you know, on response time against these two parts over a period of time, how this allowable application is running. So once it is done, uh, like as we have installed this Loki, I've just repeated this help charts. And uh, by installing the Loki, it is not enough, you know, to get the things. You have to have a prompt tail, uh, which is an agent which pushes you know, the logs uh, from the from which are residing on the server uh, to present it on Grafana. Uh, so to do that one, you have to add uh, this uh, data source. Uh, once you have that, okay. So this is the steps which we have to do that. Okay, so we need to just add uh, Loki Hello World, this Hello World screen, so that it will just start showing these metrics, uh, you know, under this. Uh, uh, completed 200 okay you can see all those details uh there, this is again log ql uh, this is a low key query language uh, there are like certain queries uh, which we can use it so it will give you all the details about errors and all those details uh, so uh, coming to this once uh, once we have this uh, okay so uh, this will be like a course uh, the curriculum uh, which we will be discussing about like how this grafana can be installed uh, what are the advanced components in that and how we can like alerting uh, alerting at the same time how we can AI ops grafana has its own like grafana on call uh, which is kind of like can work as an AI ops how we can set up so to, to just to do the arts and cleaning. Uh, how this prometheus uh, which will work uh, to set up this one how we can integrate with databases different databases uh, we can integrate with the load runner we can integrate uh, with the uh, uh, jmeter flex tv mysql and elk aws cloudwatch app dynamics and dynamics if you wanted to get certain application insights from the app dynamics to be show it on grafana and also this and during the during the load test execution if you wanted to perform any, uh, you know, in order to measure the performance of a particular application uh, during the load test, uh, those insights also, which you know, we can get uh, these things. So that's all from my side. Uh, you have any questions? Yeah, just a quick So how long is this course now? Is there training?
दिस विल बी लाइक ये ट्वेंटी आर्स so every day is one hour yeah okay so just wondering so you said you have like 17 years experience from right? the IT world yes 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 so you want into SREs uh 17 into overall IT industry and from the last 6 years I've been into like uh, uh performance uh, engineering kind of yes sir Oh okay. I'm just wondering in SRE what did you really do, you know? Sorry? Is it more with SRE did 